Unlike prokaryotes, in eukaryotes, the process of transcription is pretty complicated. It involves the elongation, but at the same time, it involves quite a lot of processing during the time of the transcription, like alternative splicing, forming a 5 prime M7G cap, and polyadenylation. So all these modification has their own significance and they help the RNA in terms of stability or many other factors. So in this video, our focus would be to understand the polyadenylation process. That means adding the poly A tail to a eukaryotic mRNA. In this video, we would learn about the processes and the enzymes and the steps involved in this particular modification and also the significance of the polyadenylation. So stay tuned and watch the video till the end. Now we all know that in eukaryotes, the transcription would take place inside the nucleus. Now during the transcription process, elongation takes place and while the mRNA is protruding out from the poly RNA polymerase, there are several enzymes getting attached to the C-terminal domain of the RNA polymerase, like capping enzymes, like alternative splicing enzymes, etc. Now, while the transcription process, I mean, that first the elongation process is almost to an end, then there is a sequence which is AAU AAA. At this sequence, there are specific proteins such as CPSF, cleavage and polyadenylation specific, specific factor. And there are also other sequence, which is a little bit downstream to that, which is geo-rich sequence, where CTSF, cleavage stimulating factor, binds. And all these enzymes which bind to these specific regions has their uh, particular significance in terms of polyadenylation. Once these enzymes bind to that region, there would be addition of a cleavage factor, or CF. This cleavage factor cleaves the RNA in a specific region downstream to AAU AAA site. And at that particular region, polyadenylation polymerase would bind to the RNA and it's a template independent polymerase. So it would keep on adding A in the mRNA and it would create a poly A strand at the end of the mRNA, something around 50 to 100 nucleotides of adenine residues would be added at the end of these mRNA without any template. Now, once these polyadenylation is kind of complete by polyadenylation polymerase, there would be other polyadenylation binding protein which would bind to those specific poly A sites at the tail of the mRNA. And these has significance. Having it has been shown that having polyadenylation increase the stability of eukaryotic mRNA. Simply that means the amount of time that the ribosome would engage with the mRNA would be more. So the round of trans the number of rounds the mRNA could be translated is more, the amount of protein that could be produced is also altered. So in terms of cellular physiology these polyadenylation has a big significance. Now, it turns out that polyadenylation helps in nuclear export of the mRNA. I mean, from the if the mRNA need to be translated, it has to be thrown out from the nucleus or exported out to the nucleus onto the end, uh, endoplasmic reticulum where the ribosomes are, which can lead to translation reaction, right? So first, it need to be exported out. And in that process, the poly A tail turned out to be very useful because it interacts with the exporting proteins and it's easy to export in that way. Now, in case of bacteria, things are different because in case of bacteria, poly A tail leads to its degradation. But in case of eukaryotic cells, the situation is completely different. Now, other than that, the polyadenylation binding protein also interact with the initiation factor 4E and 4B. These are translation initiation factor. So as the poly A tail indirectly interact with the initiation factor of translation, it makes sure the 
mRNA is forming a closed circle like structure which allows several ribosomes to be recruited onto the mRNA simultaneously and that regulates the translation and increase the rate of the translation from the same mRNA. So it has a long lasting effect itself in terms of translation rate. Now lastly but not the least alternative polyadenylation site choice is an important modification or modification strategy taken by the cell to create different proteins. Let's say this particular mRNA ha ha mRNA which is encoded from the DNA has six exons. Now what happens is that while forming the mRNA in different tissue, let's say a thyroid gland or let's say in the brain, different adenylation sites are used as a result different length of mRNA is produced. So in first case, there are only four, four exons are uh, included, but in the last case, six exons are included. And as a result, completely different protein product is produced. For example, in the first case, in the thyroid gland, calcitonin is produced, where in the second case, in the brain, CGRP peptide is produced. So depending upon what adenylation site is chosen, a complete different protein product could be deduced from a same mRNA. That leads to a huge physiological significance of polyadenylation site choice. I hope this video was pretty much uh, informative and simple to understand. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And please comment how do you like the videos and if you have any specific suggestion. Thank you.